Hi right, guys, in the last phone ringer video, I had uh, this oscillator and H-bridge running a phone ringer solenoid uh, just on its own continuously and it was mostly complete so I won't go into too much detail in this again but it's basically a 555 timer um, alternating a H-bridge and um, I've added this transformer since then um, so for 12 volts input we get 120 volts out this uh, 1 to 10 transformer um, I've added these uh, transistors, medium power transistors and they get the same input as the H-bridge basically but it's um, to make board versatile um, and to support the addition of a future transformer where the center tap is positive and uh, these two transistors alternate negative so we get the same effect of a H-bridge uh, driving a transformer that way um, this is the new circuit which is the, the Australian phone duration uh, which is the ring duration uh, 400 milliseconds on, 200 milliseconds off, 400 milliseconds on and then two seconds delay before the cycle starts again um, that's all this board does with logic, no microcontrollers so it's been made difficult uh, they're 4017s, two decade counters and another 555 oscillator um, so overall there's two 555 oscillators here the first one is the ring frequency of the actual phone solenoid and the next one is turning that off and on with the correct duration for the the ring duration um, it only controls the Texas Instruments H-bridge chip so these transistors can be ignored because they, they're not affected by this circuit at all um, they're temporarily connected to these light bulbs and I'll disconnect them for the demo because they're, they're not really relevant but uh, the neon output is that's the same output I'll connect to the phone if we put 9 volts in here we get 90 volts out here which is still enough to um, drive a neon and I've added the 7805 regulator since the last video to supply the rest of the logic with 5 volts uh, so the high voltage that comes into the circuit is only used to uh, power the transistors which are relevant for this demo and also well actually it's the center of the transformer and also the motor power for the H-bridge uh, for a demo of the circuits operation this jumper is set so that the enable pin for the H-bridge is always high and um, so basically the the ring timing that is happening on this circuit won't have an effect on this neon here um, and I probably should have dis disconnected these light bulbs they'll probably just be confusing because they don't stop so um, yeah the neon is still affected by this frequency of the, uh, the solenoid oscillator but it isn't being turned on and off by the phone ring timer so I'll put it in the new position where the uh, H bridge is now tied uh, to the um, well, the enable pin of the H bridge is now tied to the output of the timer circuit. So now you'll see that we get the um, the ringing we want, the ring duration. The speed might be wrong. We can actually speed that one up as well. That's very fast. Uh, we want it down to um, 200 milliseconds between uh, rising edges so that's uh, ring one that's ring two the LED up here is uh, to uh, test the reset uh, one chip well both chips actually reset each other at different times but uh, this one is particularly for the long delay and the yellow LED is uh, combined the actual ring indicator the ring 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 <laughs> ring so yeah and then the um, the pulse we want here 200 milliseconds between rising edges is there so I guess it's time to connect the phone this would have been a little bit too easy with a microcontroller but uh, the whole thing uh, the, the high voltage ring apart and the timer could probably be reduced to uh, just a microcontroller um, the H bridge and current, uh, the voltage regulator so three ICs strictly speaking um, but to make it interesting we used uh, two decade counters 4017 um, this one I've called um, ring and this one delay because it's largely responsible for the, the longer delay 
So um, I've clocked both of them. So uh, they should receive a rising edge every 200 milliseconds. Um, so from reset, uh, we start the ringing for the next 400 milliseconds because we've got two steps, uh, then a, a 200 millisecond delay, and then the next 400 milliseconds. Then we've got a use loss delay. And at this step, uh, we reset this chip to make sure it doesn't get to reset the chip A yet. So it should be in the same position about here when it gets reset back to here. Meanwhile, uh, the next cycle, this does nothing and then inhibits itself from uh, receiving any more clock cycles until it's reset by this chip, uh, which in its last cycle resets this chip again. So the long delay comes from resetting uh, chip B here at uh, this stage. So we got to here. We can easily adjust the long duration uh, just by which of these pins we connect um, this reset to. Uh, so basically it's doing its ring and then waiting until it gets reset by this chip and starts again. So all this is doing is adjusting the delay between those rings. So I've disconnected that neon now and uh, connected the phone just so that they're not co competing for current when it's being driven. So it's the same circuit and the phone just in place of the Those neon. two resistors there that look like a clay colour are, are cl current limiting resistors for each transformer channel. So um, by lowering that value there is plenty more oomph there if it was required. Uh, they're just there to protect uh, both the devices from heat. That all looks so simple on a functional diagram. Uh, this is the pin correct one. Uh, so I've had to use six diodes because I want LEDs for the two different rings that you saw. Um, yeah, I found that you couldn't just connect pins directly together like, like I showed in a functional diagram or one will sync all the current of the other. So um, there's four diodes from the, uh, the two ring or the four ring signals to get them into two ring signals and then combined again to the H bridge enable pin. If you didn't want the separate LEDs or no LEDs, it could just be done with the four diodes. They're 1N4148 diodes and you could just um, uh, tie the, the other ends of the four diodes to ground and take the enable pin from there. So um, I've made it a little bit more elaborate than it has to be. This one has the 555 oscillator as well. So all this is still just for the timing part of the circuit and the 555 is identical for the H-bridge part of the circuit and then now uh, you have an inverter and the H-bridge itself. There we have it assembled and cranking away on its own. There.